Why do I need four pedal boards? This is a really good question. And uh, in this video, I show you all my boards and why I need them. Here you can see all my four boards uh, I have now. The, the fourth board is more a prototype. It's not uh, set together, but the, um, the other three I really need all the time. This winter, I am going on tour with, um, with, an, uh, with a band uh, and I have maybe, I think, 21 shows and in this band I have to play a mandolin, I have to play a banjo, I have to play a nylon guitar and I am playing my electric guitar stuff. And normally I have an amplifier, a Fender amp, a Princeton or something or a deluxe reverb and I have a two rock amp simulation and then I have to put together all those instruments and um, this year, this winter, I wanted to change something. I wanted to put everything into one device and this is the, the Fractal FM3. I'm going with my electric guitar and the um, acoustic instruments into the Fractal and then I'm going out into the PA. I have one pedal board and all my instruments going into this thing. So I don't have to I don't have to take an amplifier with me and uh, an Oxbox or a two rock uh, uh, simulation for the cabinet, so I don't need it. So this is the board I put together. This is the FM3 from Fractal. And I'm using a Morningstar MC8 with the integration here. I show you in a minute. And then I put together some pedals. You can see it here. This is a volume pedal. And my signal goes right into the more or less from gig rig because I want to have every time uh, the control of the volume. So when I go down with the volume, I don't want to hear anything. And at the same time, I want to be able to tune my guitar. This is really important because sometimes in the middle of a song, I have to tune the guitar. You know, we are playing outside. It is a TV show um, we do outside and uh, sometimes there's moist, moisture and there's, uh, the temperature is, um, yeah, uh, changes really fast. So I always have to tune the guitar there. So I go down with the volume, tune the guitar and come back. This is the thing I always wanna, wanna be able to do. And this is a, um, a Lele expression pedal and this goes into the, the express, expression input from the fractal here. The signal goes into here into the more or less. So this is the volume pedal and the volume pedal has an expression pedal um, and is controlled here by the cork pedal here. And then the signal goes out into the fractal and what you can do with the more or less you can go out into a tuner. This is really nice. I love that because as I said I want to be able to tune every time. Um, yeah that's it. So. This thing is an expression pedal too. It's really nice. It's built by Luperwerk, Luper, Luperwerk <laughs> in Germany. And um, he does some great stuff. Check out the website, luperwerk.de. And uh, this is a nice expression pedal to, um, yeah, when you have maybe a delay mix something or, or the everything, everything you can control with expression. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, so I put it here, maybe I use it, maybe not, I don't know yet. So, and this is really interesting because you can combine the MC8 with the Fractal. The um, Fractal is able to use or to communicate with the FM3. There is a, a special function here the uh, Morningstar put in uh, and you can uh, to push the button here and as you can see I'm using the, the preset control here. Every time I, I'm changing a preset, maybe I'm going to this preset, it changes here. And what you can do, you can, um, you can get every scene from your preset on, on this um, MC8 here. So eight scenes I only use four most of the time. Most of the time I have four. Sometimes I have five or, or two or one. So it doesn't matter. But what you can see here, you can see always the scenes you put together. So here is scene four. It doesn't work. Uh, or I, I, I don't have a sound there. Here I have three scenes 
from the fractal. And here you can see how the, the scenes are changing. It's really fast, there's no lag or something. This works really fine. And when you change the sound while you play, it's really, there's no lag, there's no latency or something. It works really great. So this is really, really nice to work with. Yeah, sometimes when I only have one scene, I put in a, a dot into the scene name. So I see, okay, I have only one sound here. Maybe I have four sounds. And then you can see I put in um, the dots up here. So I see, okay, four sounds, that's it. The, yeah, it makes it easier to see it, to see what you have, you know. So the setup is um, programmed like this. When you do a long press here, you go to the next three presets. One press, you get into the preset. It changes here. That's it. When you do a long press on the middle button here on the FM3, you can get into the, the second view of the FM3. So if you don't know anything about the views, you can program four views for those three buttons. And uh, this is another story, but this is really nice when you want to go deeper into the functions of the, of the buttons here of the FM3. So I have, when I press when I do a long press, I, I come to the second view and there's a tap tempo and a tuner. I can use the tuner here, but I don't need it because I have one here, so no problem. But I need the tap tuning, uh, the, the, the tap tempo sometimes. You know, when I do the, the TV show, every song is running through a Pro Tools system, so we have fixed timing and I can program the, the BPM into the FM3, so I don't need a tap tempo. But sometimes when I do um, live stuff, uh, like I do in the in the winter tour with the band I'm uh, on tour, then I need a tap tempo. So easy, I go, I go to my preset. Maybe this song. I see my scenes. I need a tap tempo. Long press, tapping the tempo. Exit. Go out and next song. Maybe that's the thing. Um, it should work. Hopefully. So this is a test, test drive this, this year, this winter, so we will see what happens. The other board is a board I use with my amplifier, sometimes stereo, sometimes mono. I can change it as I, I need it. And um, sometimes between the tour gigs, I have other gigs where I want to play an amplifier. And then I need a board um, that is uh, able to have programmed stuff, patches. You know, for some gigs I need patches, it's better. Uh, and sometimes I want to be able to use it manually. So this board is really able to do everything. This is my um, board I put together to play with a, with a real amplifier or maybe with two amplifiers because it has a stereo out here. And, um, and what I do mainly here is I use a, a G3 from a gig rig, the Atom, for using my uh, analog stuff here and uh, I have the RC in the first loop, the send drive here, then I have a equalizer on the third loop, the genray, this is my main um, yeah, overdrive I'm using. The H9 is in here because um, sometimes I want to change the, the or I need a, a slap delay or something before uh, a drive pedal. And uh, I can change the order here. Of I can use the H9 maybe here at this point, something like that. And then on the sixth loop or in the sixth loop, I have the timeline. The big sky is always on, and uh, when I don't need reverb, I can uh, turn it off here. But the nice thing about this pedal board is I can use it um, complete manually, and I can program patches for every song. And this is the main thing uh, I can do here. Sometimes I am on stage and I want to be fast and um, I, I want to use a main setup for using everything manually. So this is the main patch. And what I can do here, I have, this is my main sound and every, everything gets uh, into a reset position where uh, I, can, I can play um, with, a, with a main sound or a, or a sound I'm using most of the time. And this is a Gen Ray. 
uh, no, it's a clean sound, generator is off. And um, normally, sometimes I have the RC on here for, uh, for this sound, sometimes not. Here I don't have it in, in the loop. But this is a clean sound, so I can um, now, what I can do now is I can use the, um, the stump box function here and turn on the effects I need. So here on the 2, I have the Genray. On the 3, I have the Send Drive. And on the 4, I have the RC. I can set it up like I, I want to have it. And uh, those pedals, I can turn on and I can turn off. So here are every, every pedal is on now. Now they are off. And when, when I have some stuff on and I go back to the main uh, patch, everything gets, uh, gets into a reset position or into the, the main position. And um, for the effects, I have the same thing too. I can turn on the H9 and I can turn it off here. And I can turn on the delay, the timeline, and I can turn it off. So what, what I can do now with the MC8, I can um, say I have my patches for those digital effects here in the, M, uh, in the MC8. As you can see here, I have put together some um, folders for my effects. So what I can do now, I can turn on the H9, but uh, I want to have another effect here. I can go into the folder and I can say I want to have a vibe. And um, in the same moment I push, I push the effect here, it goes back into the main page. And uh, I have the vibe on. I can turn the effect off here if I want. And I can turn it back on. So this gives me a full control of, of the manual settings here. And this is the thing I really like when I'm in a studio and I want to be fast. So I don't need patches. I want to be able to get my effects I need here. The same thing I can do with the delay. I can uh, turn on the timeline and I go here. I can go into the folder for the timeline. And then I can uh, say I want to have a, a tape delay here. And it jumps back into the main page and the tape is on here. And if I don't need it, I can turn it off. Going back to the timeline, maybe I want to have another delay sound. Turn it on, it changes, goes back to the main page. So this is the workflow it, that really works for me because it's fast and I always can see um, what I'm doing and I see if it's on or if it's not on and this this works for me really good and the, for the big sky the same thing I can um, go into the folder for the big sky and, and I can say now I want to have a plate sound here if I don't need the reverb I can turn it off here so I don't need an extra patch because it is always on in the signal you know and uh, this is good because I can go stereo out into a patch box and go uh, can go stereo with a uh, reverb into the amplifiers. The only thing that's not stereo is these two things, but I could put them here into the, into the patch as a stereo uh, effect, but normally I don't need it, so I did. I, I left it mono, it's, uh, it's okay for me. So this is how uh, this board is set up, but the next thing I forgot here, uh, you can uh, program patches. So what you can do, uh, I don't need those up and down patches normally because I have programmed my set list here. The set list function or the, the, the ordering of, this, of the songs in this MCA, MCA the Morningstar MCA, is really nice because you can program um, the set lists uh, really, really nice with the, with the application on a, on a laptop. So what I can do, I can go into um, a setup here this is, uh, these are the songs of my band, of my music. I can go in here, and this is the first song of the setup. And what, what happens when I go into the first song of my, own, of my own stuff, the setup changes here. This MC8 says what the, the preset or the bank has to be on the G3. So MIDI out, G3, it changes. When I have a gig and I have the next uh, song after this, I can make a set list here and I go easily to the next song. I have a next button programmed here. So I go to the next song um, and then I have to go to my sound. I don't need the, the, the G3 because I have um, a program change uh, thing here going on with uh, the sounds I need, you know, and you can see it changes the patches here. 
So when I do my own music with my own band, I only, I only need the MC8 for changing the programs here. Why do I use a G3 and um, uh, maybe, you know, I could use a, I could use this thing from Morningstar to program my stuff. It's also six loops and it's, it's smaller. Why do I not use this thing? Because the good thing in the gig rig, what I really like is you can program easily your stuff by pushing these buttons. You know, when I'm programming a sound, I only have to push uh, uh, to, to turn on the, the sounds here and it's saved. No programming with a laptop. Um, so this is so easy. And, and the next good thing is I have pre-gain and I have post-gain. And I really use it very often because sometimes I want to uh, go down uh, with a volume when I go into a, a drive pedal, but I want to go up with a post level. So the sound gets a little bit cleaner, but it's, uh, at the same time it gets louder on the, on the output. So this is a thing I really often use because when I play my own stuff, uh, I don't have time to, to um, change so much things. Um, I only want to push a button and the sound has to be there. So um, because I'm at the same time, I'm singing and there's very much going on. So I don't want to think about changing stuff. Um, so I want to push a button and then it changes the preset here. So this is an easy thing with a G3. And um, I really love the function of the pre-gain and the post-gain. And, um, uh, and I like the function only pushing the button and save it. So this, this really works. So this is my um, main pedal board when I am playing with my, with my band and with my amplifiers. And uh, yeah, the signal flow uh, is interesting because the signal flow um, goes into the patch box here and the patch box goes into the gig rig. Then through all the effects, then it goes out into the big sky and um, no, it goes out into the boost or the volume pedal that's controlled here with an expression pedal. Uh, and then it goes into the big sky and then out into the patch box. So this is the signal flow of this thing here. And uh, yeah, one thing, the last thing, what's really important for me when I play live, I always want to be able to tap my tempo of the timeline. And it should always be on a, on a good spot where I can reach it and not be somewhere here. So I, I use the expression port of the timeline to use a uh, tap delay. This is really handy. And uh, this thing is from Looperwerk 2. Um, you can go to the website uh, looperwerk.de. It's a German website and he builds those things. And this has the Lela button. And this is, this is really smooth stuff here. I, I love it because um, yeah, it works great. Um, that's it. That's my second board. And then the third board is a smaller board for little gigs. It's everything manual, but I have everything in there I need. So when, um, when the other stuff is somewhere in a, in a truck and on tour with some band, I always have this board here in the studio for recording stuff. This pedal board is for smaller gigs where I only need maybe some sounds or the, the essential sounds for doing gigs or having a studio session. And, um, that's the board. And um, I have a patch box here. I go in, uh, into the uh, tuner here. This is the first thing. And uh, after the tuner, I'm uh, going into the, um, no, all the effects. Tuner out and into all the effects. So the, the Voodoo one is the first one. I sometimes use it, uh, use it to push the the input of the guitar a little bit more so I can turn down the guitar. So this is a good boost for, for doing that. Um, maybe, you know, you have a, a humbucker guitar that has high power output. Uh, it's maybe off. And then when I have a Stratocaster, I want to push a little bit the input so I have more uh, volume or gain control with that. So, uh, and it, uh, it's a nice sound. It's, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, um, it, it has some grit. It has some, a little bit drive here and the, and the output is full, full uh, on 100 person, so I have some uh, more gain control. So that's the thing I do here. Then I have uh, uh, the, the Halcyon, or what is it called? I always forget the name. Halcyon. Halcyon. Cyan? Halcyon? I don't know. 
uh, from Origin Effects, really great uh, um, uh, Tube Screamer-like pedal, I really love. And uh, then the Dualist, two channels. I think the first channel I use is always the Drive B here. And when I need a little bit more power, I can turn on the other one. So, this is the, the third um, drive pedal. Then the next drive pedal is a SH9. It's a SD9 clone, the Scott Henderson version. Really nice distortion. I sometimes use when I need a li little bit more distortion. And then I go into the equalizer and in the studio, as you know, it's always nice to have some control over your um, yeah, your um, spectrum of the sound. Maybe you, you don't need the bass because you have a, a humbucker guitar with more bass and you turn it down. Maybe you want to do a telephone small amp kind of sound and you do this. Uh, maybe you need a little bit more push in, in, in the solo. I don't know, you know, um, this is stuff you really, yeah, it's essential stuff for the studio. So that's what I use here. So, and uh, after the equalizer, um, we go into uh, the effects here. This is my, what is it? Uh, yeah, it's a HX effect by Line 6. It's the bigger version from the HX stomp. And I always love the Line 6 stuff because you are so fast with um, changing effects. So let's say you have a tape delay and you can hold you can hold the button here and it goes into a sub-menu where you can change all the stuff and then you go out and um, you can save it or maybe not save it. I don't know, in the studio session you don't have to save it. And I have, normally I have a, a main page here. I can go in and uh, I go into the other mode where all the effects uh, are and I can turn it on or off all the stuff I need. And I, when I need another effect, I can maybe program another patch with other effects. And, uh, you know, you can do everything with that. You can go banks up and down. Great, great sounding effects. And um, I always used the, um, the M9 from Line 6 um, and the M13 before, but it was too big for me, so I used the M9. And uh, these effects are a little bit newer it's an update in the effects quality so it's a little bit better sounding but the effects from the m9 are still in here um, as a legacy version so check out this stuff maybe some guys of you know know it already good good stuff here um, and then after the effects after the after this um, i go out into the patch box the flint here the reverb is um, in the effects loop of the of this thing here. So when you go into effect um, and you can see the, the order, the signal flow, you can see I have an effects loop here. And um, these, these are two effects loop. One is the volume pedal or the boost. This is the boost. It's in the effects loop. So I can always push the sound for some um, dB up for a solo or something. I always want to be able to have some dBs for a solo. And then there is another loop um, with a reverb because sometimes I want to use the trem without the reverb and put it somewhere else so I'm able to change the, the order here. So a really flexible setup. Uh, everything is manual. I don't have to program presets. It's everything manual. Um, yeah, and this is my third board for um, studio jobs or uh, smaller gigs. Yeah, and this is my <laughs> this is my fourth board and uh, as you can see, it's a total mess because it is a prototype. And this prototype, I really like those uh, power, uh, by the way, those um, power supplies by Strymon, the OJ and the Suma. Really great stuff um, I often use. So I use, uh, normally I use the, the Strymon power uh, uh, supplies or the, the Chucks stuff. It's really good. Um, so yeah, that's the thing I want to do here. This is a this is a prototype board because um, I have so much stuff uh, I, I have in, in um, yeah here in my in my studio that I normally don't use. But I wanted to put together a board for the studio when I want to do some experiments with some uh, sounds I normally don't use. So I put together this. I have some fuzz sounds uh, and drive pedals I normally don't use that often. Uh, all that stuff that can uh, that I can use um, in a studio session. So 
some um, some digital effects here, uh, the the, womp, uh, the walrus stuff, delay, um, the modulation effect, and the reverb, um, and a and a nice delay for some experimental stuff. So with lo-fi sounds, all that stuff, uh, I want to put together on this experimental board for studio work. So it, this is a, as I said, it's not it's not finished. There's no nothing in there. No okay, cable. I have to put it together. But when I have time. I want to do this. So this is the fourth board. Thank you for watching. This was a really nerdy video with all my stuff I have here. And uh, I know it gets sometimes out of control. But this time I think I have three boards I really like, I really love and I can um, use every part of it because yeah, every board has a reason to be there and uh, to be used. So the fourth board is a, a little extra, a little prototype. I may put together next year. So yeah, this is the reason why. And um, thank you for watching and um, see you in the next video here. Uh, thank you for subscribing and push the bell if you like, uh, if you like the videos. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Bye bye.